howdy y'all welcome to my channel today I will show you how I created this Halloween card so set a spell kick your shoes off and let's get started we are going to take our soldering mat and use that as the surface where we do this technique so to start out we've got our paper studio embossing folder it's got a spider web pattern on it. We've got our Crayola white crayon. And we also have our white cardstock piece. We're going to take our white cardstock piece, place it over this raised edge side of the embossing folder. I'm going to show you what, how we're going to do this. And just rub that. Today, I'm going to use this same technique, but rather than doing it on printer paper with a colored crayon, I'm going to do that technique with some white cardstock and a white crayon. But I wanted to show you what I was doing first since it might be a little bit harder to see with the white crayon until I bring something else in. So I'm just taking some washi tape. Now I am going to tape that to the raised portion of the embossing folder. So we're going to bring the white crayon back in. And we're going to do some rubbing. So that should be nice. So what we did was we used this white crayon and it's going to act as resist. Um, and then it will show up something similar to this. But of course, using the black soot distressing. And we're gonna use the makeup brush. So, Oh yeah, that looks much better. Ooh, okay. So just continue to add the black soot ink until you get the desired effect you want on your card front. If you're worried about the sections that the washi tape covered, you can always trim that paper down. There, I think it looks sufficiently creepy. Just like a spider web should. So now we have our area nice and sufficiently spooky. And I'm going to trim down the sections where you can totally see that we had the washi tape holding our panel in place. Now considering the fact that we did use some distress ink, we can bring in our water bottle to spritz it and help make those areas look a little more creepy. So we just need our kitchen towel. Okay. So now we have the crayon and the distress ink. And we did a bit of spritzing. Um, now, what we're going to do is I've gathered some creepy little spider die cuts. So our creepy little spider die cuts, they're going to help us out with the illusion of this being an actual spider web. And being that our spider, I mean, and being that they're spiders, we of course need some black cardstock for them, but I'm going to also use 
some some fun flock this is plain old black now I've had this a long time it's kind of like embossing powder to me um, so I don't use it that often but I feel like a nice fuzzy spider just adds to the creep factor now to make our spiders fluff, fuzzy fluffy I'm going to take some scrapbook adhesive sheet this one has been used a couple of times and that's just fine it just has to be the right size for your cardstock piece so just peel the backing okay there you go there is the backing and we're going to remove it we're going to turn this piece on its side now you can see that I also have some adhesive backing on the back side of this piece and that's so that we don't have to worry about gluing the, the little spiders down we don't have to worry about that we just have to die cut them we're gonna bring that washi sheet back washi tape back in to help us die cut and okay that's we're still going to use the, this. We just need to make sure we mount everything just so. And we're going to trim this piece down a bit so I can run it through our die cut machine. Okay, so our Sizzix Sidekick, it has this little flap right here. And that locks your die cut machine in place. So now you can just move your die cut. Your, you can put your cutting plates and your little dies and the paper that they're going to cut into the machine. I can remove that. And so much like how when I heat emboss, I like to bring in coffee filters. I'm gonna do the same thing for our die cuts and that's because I want to not waste any of the fun flock. So we're going to remove the backing. Well we're going to remove the front side of our spiders backing and we'll leave the back side alone for right now. So there is our spider. And here's our fun flock. That's looking really nice like I wanted it to. And so all we did, because um, it was so quick, you might not have been able to tell, I poured the fun flock over our die cut piece and now I can show you what I basically did. So you take the fun flock and you make sure that it goes on the piece you want it on. And basically you just kind of press that piece to the fun flock. That way you know that it gets where you want it to be. For right now, we're just going to pour the remaining fun flock back into the bottle. This is much the same way that you would do it if you if this were embossing powder. And the remainder, we're just going to bring in our microfiber cloth and we're going to just brush that off of our table. So now because we had back we had adhesive backing on both sides of our black cardstock for our spiders, what we can do is remove the backing portion 
And now we can stick our creepy spider on our card front like so. And I'm going to place the smaller one on another side. I like the smaller ones because it makes me feel like maybe these are the little spider <laughs> babies and that that's the big mama spider. These are at least the babies that stayed home because I think spiders can lay a ton. I don't, I'm not sure how many eggs they lay, but I know they definitely lay more than one or two eggs. So there's that and I'm going to put one more spider on here. I just have to die cut it out. So there you go. There's our creepy crawly spider. Blah. <laughs> and now I just need to put the fun flock back in. Now I don't know that you guys can get fun flock anymore. If I can find some I will definitely list the link in the description box. Um, however, I do know you guys can still get some flocking sheets and do a similar effect. It's just, this is what I have at home. Um, so there's our little spiders just hanging out on their little, well, rather large spider web. And now for our card, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring in the card base so that we can attach the front to the base. So here is our card base and I'm going to stick it onto some black card base. And for the inside, I'm going to place some white paper. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use some foam sheet to lift our card front up from the base. And I'm just using some 3M foam tape for this. Because it has the waxiness of the crayon on the back side, I'm going to use the larger sheet, larger strip of it, which I normally would cut down, but I want to be sure that it's secure. So I'm not going to cut it down this time. There you go. That should help us out. Where'd our little spider do? Dude, go. Oh. See, he went and started being all creepy and decided to fly off the handle. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring in my T square to help me make sure that I get it straight on there. If we didn't. If we hadn't needed to trim our piece down, then I probably would have just used my Misty to help us. So don't press it down all the way. Just kind of lightly put it on there until you are certain that your piece is nice and straight. Yeah, that sh that sh that'll work. Okay. And then we can just peel the rest of the backing off as well. Okay. So that is our creepy crawly card so far. I think that's pretty perfect for Halloween. In order to finish our card up, I'm going to stick a sentiment on the inside of it. I've already got the cardstock that's going to go in it in my 
stamp positioning tool along with the sentiment stamp that's going to go. Now the ink we're going to use for this is Crackling Campfire along with, we're going to bring the black soot back in and to add uh, the element of the spider we're going to take that spider we die cut the first go around and we're going to use that for the inside of the card because this one didn't exactly match these but I think one spider on its own will be just great and because our black soot is a small cube we will actually be able to place this ink on after we get the crackling campfire onto our stamp. Now we can bring the black soot in to ink up the bottom of our sentiment. And we don't have to worry about cross-contamination because since this is a black ink, you can just do that because black has pretty much every color in it, I believe. That's starting to look real nice. So I'm going to, well, I'm gonna clean this stamp now because I want to be able to use it to re-stamp the sentiment so it's a bit crisper. Okay, so there you go. That, that is just how I wanted it to look. Now the cardstock that I used to stamp the sentiment on is actually it's well it's a flimsier cardstock but that's actually kind of why I used it for this because I wouldn't necessarily use it for my card front but I'm perfectly fine using it for my sentiment and as far as this ink goes I'm actually going to I'm gonna splatter some something on here in certain areas just just to up that creep factor that is so reminiscent of Halloween. I'm going to bring in some distress paint in candied apple. Just need to put a little bit in there. That should be enough from our Distress Sprayer. We are also bringing in this box. I like to take my thumb and I like to do this. There you go. So now our little inside piece looks a little more creepy for Halloween. And then I just take my toothbrush and put it under the sink and clean, clean it off while our paint dries. I want to thank y'all for sticking with me to the end of the video of the creation of this Happy Halloween card. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about the card, leave them in the comment section down below. I will provide the names of all the supplies I used today, and where available, I will provide a link to them. 
If you would like to see future videos on my channel, please click the subscribe button. So I hope y'all stay safe, stay healthy, stay crafty. Bye y'all.